those are the two big ones that a lot of people are behind. It is the most. For some reason, I, the labels kind of, even if you remove the labels, like people with common interests are going to be together against other people with different interests. And that's kind of okay, we're going to go ahead and get started um, because we do have a bit of work to do uh, before Friday. If you check your um, project one sheet that I gave you, uh, we have a deadline coming up this Friday. Your experimental write-up is due. Um, so today I want to talk about experimental write-ups as far as what are they, what do they mean, what does it do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, experimental write-ups are a part of technical writing. Um, I'm including it in this technical writing um, sequence because uh, it is a critical part of technical writing. As we discussed, any information that starts in your head, unless you have an effective way of getting it out of your head and into somebody else's hands, um, then you, you really, there's no merit to it. An idea that starts in your head and dies in your head um, is a wasted thought entirely. So for us, looking forward and saying, um, you know, we're, we're doing the scientific method, uh, we're coming up with an experiment, we're gonna be doing this experiment now. Um, all experiments need to have a set of characteristics really to be considered valid, okay? And what an experiment has to have First and foremost, is it has to be documented. Okay? And what that means is you have to be taking measurements. You have to have measurements written down. Uh, oftentimes scientists will have a lab notebook where they will take their measurements, they will write them down, and then they will transcribe them into an electronic format. Some people will have it go directly to an electronic format. Um, if you do that, you do have to have document control such that only certain people can access those documents. Uh, there has to be some element of control so that um, you know, Thomas doesn't hack into my computer and decide to delete all the data that I just collected. Uh, or hack into my computer and make all the data play the, uh, the Neon Cat song uh, when, you, when you plug it in. Um, you, know, you, you have to make sure there is some control over your data. Uh, and that is one of the nice things about having a lab notebook. I personally do not like handwriting things um, because my handwriting is atrocious. Uh, my fives look like S's. Uh, welcome to what you're going to get to experience when you take upper level classes with me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And my twos look like Z's. So uh, I've been informed that I need to over exaggerate my letters a lot more. Um, but yeah, beyond that, thanks, man. My handwriting is the same. See, but not ever. There are some engineers, there are some physicists in this program who have the most immaculate handwriting I've ever seen. Like they're writing, and I'm like, is this handwritten or did you type that? Because there's no friggin' way. Um, I digress. Okay. Um, that has nothing to do with class today. Uh, experiments have to be documented. You have to have notes written down. You have to have measurements written down. You have to have what happened. Okay? Um, these also have to be repeatable. If I tell you, I went outside and I measured how much sunlight there was, and here's the results I got, you're not going to be able to, re to reproduce my experiment at all. First of all, you have no idea what equipment I use. Second of all, you have no idea how I measured it. You have no idea what angle relative to the sun I was measuring, what time of day I was measuring at. All of these variables that really matter, I didn't tell you anything about. You're not gonna be able to replicate it. And as such, all of the documentation that I have is worthless, because it's not repeatable. This and this together produce viable results from an experiment. Okay, so 
when it comes to an experimental write-up. Uh, I think we're going to need some assistance here. Um, one of my absolute favorite places to go uh, for how-to uh, instructions is, of course, the internet. Um, ah, oh, shoot, i got to go grab my speaker. No, no, I don't. There's no real words in this. There's no real words. Um, let me drop down the screen. Um, I find this uh, very useful. I like to uh, I like to go back to these videos and watch them to learn stuff. So, pardon me if I uh, am, uh, if you've seen these videos before, well, so be it. But. I know, right? It's your fault for not thinking of this. No! I show you things that make me laugh. And every once in a while I show you something that you, make, you may learn. <laughs> oh, I love how to basic. What it truly means to you to, to be here performing that song? This song was All right, so we have to watch another one. one. Of my best friends ever in. I miss Let's him for see. a long, long time. Oh. Well, I guess we're going to have to watch this. This guy loves toilet humor, so I may have to show. <laughs> so, yeah. Ooh, this one's a good one. Yeah. I'm sorry for all of those who were expecting to learn something today.
eventually I could be The worst part is that some of the videos that are on this channel are about cooking, and they're really good videos. Oh yeah, like the how to make traditional ramen, and it actually looks yeah. amazing, and then he, and then he destroys it. it. Like here, here, here's a good one. You can learn something about cooking right before he decides to go off the deep end. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, but they actually do do some cooking videos, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to watch any more of these, but this does make me laugh. This is not an appropriate way to come up with an experimental procedure. Um, although the beginning of the vid these videos usually do a good job. So, um... What am I? Well, first of all, what did that have to do with class? Silly you, I don't have any reason for showing you internet videos. <laughs> it was, they, they gave you quantities of things to throw. Um, not that that's. For some of it. Yes. He didn't show you how many eggs to throw out the car. That's true. Yeah. 
I mean, we'd have to go back and count, and I don't really want to do that. How many hits with the uh, <laughs> X? <laughs> oh, that's gross. A lot. Um, so, uh, anyways, um, so let's get back to class. Uh, when you turn in your experimental write-up, uh, I'm going to be expecting a number of things from you, okay? Um, first of all, you will need to hand in your question again. Okay, so your first thing of your experimental write-up, it should be a document. You restate your question. If you have a different question than what you started with, that's okay. I don't care if you change your question at this point. My goal is it's normal to change your question when you, after you do your research, because you come to find what people have studied, what things are true, what people don't know. Sometimes the greatest information you can find is what you can't find, um, because that tells you where there's a gap in knowledge. So restate your question. It can be the same one as before. It doesn't have to be. Um, second, you're going to need to state, uh, hold on, I have a list. Um, I posted this on Canvas, and this time I actually made sure that there's a way to submit this. Um, but it's, it's on Canvas. Item one was you need to submit your question. Item two, you need to submit your hypothesis. Your hypothesis is going to need to be a statement that addresses your question. What do you think is going to happen? Okay. Step number three, you need a list of variables. And you have to identify your dependent and independent variables. If you don't know what dependent and independent variables are, um, we can talk about that again. We, we discussed that a few weeks ago. Okay, the important thing about listing your variables that are important to your experiment is because these variables need to be addressed in your experimental write-up. Okay, step four, uh, you're going to need to talk about your materials that you need. Okay, what is it that you need to, exper to perform your experiment? If I need to go buy you something for your experiment, I need to know. And it should be something within reason. Uh, I'm not going to go out and buy you a Nintendo Switch so you can see whether or not a Nintendo Switch sits on Ublek well. Uh, particularly because there's Nintendo Switches, thanks to COVID, have been really hard to find. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to waste money on, on a silly experiment when we could, instead of a Nintendo Switch, be talking about a piece of wood or something like that. Um, so I will need to know what materials you need. You can provide any materials you would like. If you want to bring in your own cup or jar or whatever, um, or you want to bring in some kind of a specialized sensor, or you want to use your cell phone to take measurements, that's great. That's all you. Okay, lastly, you need your experimental write-up. Now what is an experimental write-up? Well, it is a step-by-step -step repeatable process. You should address all of your variables in your write-up. Okay? How do you measure your independent variables and dependent variables? How are you going to change them? How is this going to be performed? If temperature is necessary, how are you going to control that? At the end of the day, we're all going to be performing experiments in this room. We have a nice tile floor so we can kind of make a mess. Um, please don't make a mess, but it's better than last year when we made a mess on carpeted floor. And I had to apologize to the janitorial service, uh, which they were very nice about it, but I still felt really bad. Um, but we have a nice clean room to work with. Uh, the temperature in here is relatively constant. Um, so if, you're, if you believe temperature is an environment, simply state that this works at 70 degrees Fahrenheit because that's where all of our experiments are going to be done. Unless you need a hot plate or something, in which case then we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, 
Okay. So this should be a numbered list that helps someone repeat what it is that you did. That should be the goal. Okay? Any questions on this document that you're writing? You only need to submit one of these per your group. Same as last. You can use the same document together. Um, you can copy information out of this document to put into your final paper. It's going to be due in like three weeks or two weeks. Okay? You need to be done with this by this week because next week, Monday, we're going to have class. I'm going to look at all of your materials that are needed. I'm going to go out and talk to each group, try to figure out what I have to go buy, and then I'm going to have to go buy it. And then Wednesday and Friday, we're going to be performing our experiments. Um, and then we're done with this section of class. So it is coming quickly. Yes, Jace. Um, well, my goal is I, I don't really want to spend more than about five to ten dollars per group. So if you're saying like I need a bathtub full of oobleck, like I I think we need to try to think a little smaller than that. <laughs> don't like with oobleck. Yeah, I don't I don't see any environmentalists getting mad about that. Um, yeah. Uh, so I would say. Um, if you can do your experiment with about two cans of cornstarch, um, that's probably within a range where I could probably even buy you a pan or something special if you need it. Okay, we do have some equipment available through our department already that we can use. I will expect you, as adults, to clean up afterwards. I don't think we have a sink in here. Um, but we do have sinks in the bathroom, we do have sinks in the physics lab. Um, I will expect you to clean up afterwards.